Hey guys, Steve here. Today we're going to be taking a brief look at the Midway and the Haikuru, uh, the two legendary tier carriers. Now about, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, me and Meta got together, uh, played for about an hour and a half, loading the carriers at the same time, because what's going to happen here uh, for a while is it's going to be very hard to get a legendary tier game. So I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit. Keep that in mind though, because... Legendary tier carriers in the current matchmaking, they can only play uh, tier 8 and legendary tier, tier 9. So unless there's a mirrored carrier on the enemy team, they're just going to be sitting in queue for a long time. All right, so think about that when you're deciding what you want to do with these. Uh, some caveats. I'm not Mr. Carrier. Uh, I don't I don't wreck my life when I'm playing. I mean, they tend to target me a lot more than I think uh, they typically would which is certainly annoying, but I don't think they've ruined the game like we were kind of afraid, of, you know, when they were coming out. Um, but that said, I just don't really enjoy playing them. So, you know, take it for what it is. What you're seeing here is what it is. I also can't go over the stats. I forgot to write down the stats before the ships were removed from my inventory. Uh, but the first one, Midway here, it's got a similar feel to the other American uh, things now. Much easier to deplane these ones, and uh, you can run into some issues pretty early. You know, if you're really aggressive, just bombing right off the bat. So we were finding good strategy: spend the first few minutes just kind of hovering out of AA range, but do a good job spotting. Look for opportunities to find destroyers. Yes, but uh, you know, if you can kind of delay the time that you're going to get, uh, you know, your planes shot out from under you. Well, they can have a little bit more success later in the match. Now, clearly in this match, we're going straight for the bombs, and it is what it is. But that would be my advice. Uh, at least that's what me and Meta were kind of thinking. Uh, neither of us are exactly carrier geeks. But that made sense to me. Relatively hard hitting. Uh, I didn't notice a huge difference between this and whatever the Tier 7 uh, American is in terms of damage. You know, we saw a few bomb strikes there. It looked like about 10k on those battleships, maybe a little smaller one. A pretty good damage overall, though. So if you really uh, focus on a single target, you can get rid of them relatively easily. Uh, the torpedoes, I don't think they're quite as effective. Usually the American uh, carriers are more focused on the dive bombs, but they're not horrible either. You'll get to see a couple uh, torpedo launches here, of course. So, you know, for me, this is... I'd say out of the two carriers, the two legendary tier carriers, this one's going to do better for people that are playing carrier more how I would typically propose that be played, which is more of a scouting, spotting type of a ship with an emphasis on finding the destroyers and uh, doing damage while we're doing this, okay? And this seems to work pretty well for this. The other one that we're going to cover here in a moment, uh, the Japanese, I feel like you can go kind of more balls of the wall, but we'll talk about that. But getting back into the considerations, are you going to want these carriers or not? Uh the very real possibility that's going to be very hard to find a match for a while needs to be addressed. Now, if you're purely a carrier player, all you play is aircraft carriers, then sure, why would you go for bureau projects that are anything else? Um, but, you know, I, I do need to emphasize the uh, the inability or the likely inability to easily get games. Now, a lot of the guys that are pursuing these, they probably switch their bureau projects right at the same time, and they'll roughly start getting them all once. So that prediction could be wrong, right? Just keep that in mind. That's just my speculation, my suggestion. Maybe enough carrier players will all get the the uh, legendary tier carriers right about the same time, and they'll start playing them regularly enough that it'll never be an issue, okay? But it is something to consider, right? It's like, do I want to play Destroyer and Ranked or not? Well... Sure, I'd love to play Destroyer in Ranked, especially I got you know feel like I have the most control over a Ranked match in a Destroyer, but I know I'm going to have to wait two, three minutes to get in the match. So, one consideration for you. Now, the other consideration, I mean, I don't play uh, the Tier 7 American and uh, Japanese carriers enough to have a outstanding feel for their capabilities, but these ones didn't seem massively uh, stepped up over them. I think they're trying to be careful with the balance. A lot of times with these carriers, they kind of introduce them in a careful manner, we'll say, which is appreciated, by the way. I'd rather uh, they take the time with these carriers because they are kind of a 
inappropriate feature for the game, right? It doesn't really make sense what they're here to do. And if they tune them too strongly, they can absolutely ruin the uh, game for the rest of the players. So I'll keep that in mind. Here's what we're talking about earlier with the spotting. And especially great idea on these Japanese uh, destroyers who can't really shoot back. He's chased out of the smoke. And we're just going to go ahead and fly around keep him lit. And uh, our team's luckily shooting at him. So pretty solid uh, carrier player, carrier play there, in my opinion, at least. Um, but anyway, you know, for me, did these carriers just send the thrill of my leg? No, but do any of them? Not really. I kind of like playing the Poe Beta, and I kind of like playing the uh, the uh, German Tier 7 once in a while. Maybe some of the premiums aren't too bad once in a while, but again, carriers aren't really my thing, so I'll take everything I'm saying with as much grains of salt as you need. All right, so here's a look at the Hakuryu. Um, and the difference between this one, plane regeneration and squad size, uh, again, going back to me and Meta's conversations when we're playing these, uh, these ones seem like you can just kind of attack. Now here we're doing a early scouting maneuver anyway, which is always a nice, uh, move to make as a carrier player, try and let the whole blue team know roughly where everything is if they're paying attention to what you're spotting. Uh, but these planes less durable than the Americans, but they regenerate very quickly. And I think keep an eye on that as the match goes on. I think you can uh, field pretty robust squadrons throughout the match. So we were thinking, okay, let's go balls the wall, start uh, bombing stuff uh, in these and see what you can see what kind of damage you can get. Uh, I didn't save too many games unless I just had a couple to pick from. So a lot of this is just me goofing off, testing out different things, but that's a look at the carriers for you. Regatless. So I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Non-carrier players, are you worried about these things? Um, you know, what what's your thoughts overall? I think, you know, typically people that are opposed to carriers in general aren't going to be any more or less supportive than this, but I'm mostly interested in hearing from the guys that are like, oh, you know, feel kind of like me where, all right, the carriers are all right. They're not the end of the world. Uh, but how, what's your expected impact on legendary tier? And, of course, I want to hear from the actual either the carrier mains or the people that play carriers often enough. Um, are these, which one are you pursuing? Are these enticing enough for you to dedicate the resources to the Bureau, the time and the resources? What's your approach going to be to it? So I'm kind of, uh, part of the reason I wound up making the video was just to get some feedback from you guys to kind of get a read on what to expect going forward here. Uh, so you can see those torpedoes, they're pretty decent in terms of performance once they're in the water but you got to line them up quite a ways it looks like quite a long lead time on those well they hit all right though you know a couple of hits we got thirteen thousand damage don't know exactly where we hit them probably hit the torpedo belt that's fine so i mean if you had a uh, lighter armored ship without torpedo protection you can definitely do some damage with the uh, torpedoes like the other japanese carriers torpedoes are going to be more favored over the he bombs right they're kind of the American and the Japanese, in my mind, are kind of the most generic lines or, you know, middle-of-the-road lines, balance lines, however you want to phrase it. But one of them is more focused on uh, torpedo performance. One of them is on HE bombs. That's my uh, read on it anyway. So you can get what you do uh, either way. A pretty tight group in there, when, even when we're going broadside. But you can see not a huge amount of damage. We just had one hit there, though, so nothing too wild. Um, but... Keep in mind, man, we've, our squads have been kind of getting wiped out, but if you see there, the the uh, plane responds. We're fielding roughly full squads every time. So as long as we're not going too crazy uh, with these, you'll, you'll, the planes on the uh, Hakuro will regenerate quick enough. The other thing I do want to point out, uh, maybe we'll see it in this clip of the footage or not, this game, I started getting shot. I didn't put any camels on these because I'm not necessarily uh, committed to pursuing them in the Bureau. I haven't bought the projects yet. Maybe someday um, I'll succumb to some sort of urge that hasn't yet hit me. But you know, the carrier detection uh, that you'll be seeing on the screen, if you're paying attention to it and we're in the carrier uh, view mode, will be uh, significantly improved if you put on uh, the camo. And I don't even think we put them. I did put some mods, but I can't. I don't think I put the slot four mods on either of these because uh, those are a significant expense. Uh, just to try out something for a few times. So, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm not blown away by it. I'm not threatened by it, necessarily. Uh, a lot of the legendary tier ships themselves, pretty good AA protection. Um, but a consideration 
to have going forward is the more and more the carriers are appeared at a given tier, well, then the more value putting on, a say, a slot for a, a mod uh, potentially has. So the downside of specking for anti-AA on your ships, when you're rarely running into the carriers, is you're usually wasting a valuable mod slot, right? But as we're kind of seeing now with Tier 7, and we've previously seen it certainly at Tier 3 and to a lesser extent Tier 5, those are more and more... Uh, becoming filled with carriers, right? There's fewer and fewer games where you don't have a carrier at those lower to mid tiers. So it's going to be the same kind of progression here. It's going to be very slow to start. Uh, the people that have a lot of experience in the game, they got a lot of high level commanders, they'll probably get them relatively quickly. And then the rest of the player base might be a while. So keep that in mind as you're planning your reaction to the introduction of these carriers when they actually do start appearing on the high seas don't panic quite yet anyway that's a look at the carriers for you guys hopefully you enjoyed it if you did please hit the thumbs up new to the channel consider subscribing lots of world warships coming all the time questions comments leave them below love to hear from me and i'll see y'all later peace